Alright, so I've decided to <clears throat> excuse me, make a video on my build, which I have posted on the forums for engineers. Um, I'm just going to go through real quick what I've chosen in each tree and explain the purpose for each. Um, this is detailed in the guide. If you have any questions, you can feel free to post a comment here or on the official forums and I'll take a look. Um, but without further ado, we have Seismic Slam, which I actually have left at one point in the guide, but I made a new character um, just to test this out specifically because I wanted to try and go the route of maxing Seismic Slam while leveling, um, or at least raising it to a good level, um, because leveling as a focus-based engineer is really difficult, especially when you don't really have any skills that scale with your main stat until you get Emberquake, unless you've chosen Seismic Slam, which is one of the reasons why I decided to level this character through again. Um, I have another one that's an Elite New Game Plus Plus right now, and it's going fine, and I have it just Seismic Slam at one point, and instead opted to max Stormburst, but this time around I'm doing it the opposite. Um, that's enough about that. We've got Ember Quake, which is our main damaging skill. It scales with our focus. Um, it also has a chance to burn, which is nice. Everyone likes damage over time, just passively dealing a percentage of their health, and that's great. Um, the initial hit actually does scale with strength, but it is not the main damage portion of this skill. If you're going for a strength build, I'm going to recommend Flame Hammer because it will deal more damage with your strength. Um, the splinters on Flame Hammer do scale with focus, but overall it is a strength-based move. That being said, you can't get a high enough top-end damage with Flame Hammer to actually compete with Emberquake, because it's so damn strong. Um, it really is. And each tier bonus, you can see, gives 20%, 40%, and 60% more fire damage, and that is huge because the fire damage this spell deals is the main focus um, and I do build around that. Um, the last thing I take in this tree is supercharge. Um, I'm a dual wield engineer and it's a little out of the box and while some people might say that you might as well just go one hand and shield the two hand, I like to play the way I like to play <laughs> so I made a dual wield and that's pretty much it. But Supercharge goes really well with dual wield because each time you attack while the proc is up, and it does proc when you use Emberquake, by the way, um, but it does additional weapon damage with each strike, and it also increases your charge rate. And with this build, when Supercharge is up and you're on a single target, like say you're on a boss, um, <coughs> that is the fastest way to build up your charge. Um, I haven't really found a faster charge building mechanism for single target besides this and it works really well in a focus based build because you're constantly getting executes which makes your damage while you're auto attacking go up um, you aren't investing in strength at all so as you'll notice I've got 50 base decks right now um, I'm working to get that to about 112, 113 I like to have about 20% crit and 20% dodge chance that's, that's just me um, if it's up to you, you can also throw everything into focus. But I'm also going to eventually have a hundred or so base vitality, so that I get the armor bonus of, I believe it's 25% total. It might be 20. I actually haven't looked at my stat sheet in a little while. Um, but for the most part, we're going to invest into focus. You see it's at 215 base. My magic damage is at 125.5%, and my execute chance is almost at 50%. Um... I'm only level 55 right now on this character. Um, my strength, I haven't touched. I've left it at base. But you'll notice my weapon damage is still really high. Um, this is because I finally found these two weapons, which I have... I looked them up on the armory, and I saw, oh, they deal purely elemental damage. And here's the key. Your focus is going to increase the weapon damage that you deal only if your base damage is fire. So you can see right underneath where it says the attack speed of the weapon, you'll see it says fire damage 210 to 419. Now on most melee weapons you'll get something like this. And this is a weapon I was using for quite a while. Um, 
but you have the physical damage portion, and that part actually isn't affected by your focus. Um, interestingly enough, the strength attribute actually will affect both the physical and elemental aspect. It just affects all weapon damage, um, but focus will only affect elemental damage. Um, so you'll see that this has a other weapon, the word axe, has a higher poison damage than physical. So because while leveling you're looking for anything that gives you elemental damage more than physical, I take it. I also found this one in an earlier point, which gave me a, a lot of electric damage and very low physical. And the good thing about this, which alleviates the pain a little bit, is if we go into our next tree, we'll see we have only taken one active. We've got healing bot. And this little guy is really nice. He pulses every 7.5 seconds right now for me. Um, it goes up to, I believe it's 5 seconds at rank 15. I could be wrong about that. But anyways, he will give you passive healing, passive mana regeneration, and also a passive armor boost with the tier 2 and 3 bonus. And although armor, <laughs> I'll be honest, at the higher levels <coughs> in the new game plus modes, Really, it's all about damage reduction, just flat. The The armor doesn't really help all that much. If you go into a fight without force field and without having a lot of damage reduction in your gear, you can expect to just die on Elite, New Game++ plus plus especially. Um, so yeah, healing bot, kind of mandatory. You look at the passives, I got Bulwark at 5 out of 15 right now. I plan on maxing this. Um, just... Physical damage is the most common type of damage in the game, and this will give you a flat reduction to that, which really helps. And the armor bonus, like I said, yeah, it's nice, um, but unfortunately your armor is not going to be what makes or breaks your character in the higher difficulties, unless you've gone for, say, maybe a full vitality build for some summoner type thing. Um, that's another thing that's popular. Um, fire and Spark. Now this thing is really helpful. Um, as you can see right now, I'm at 40% extra damage. And this will affect your weapons. If your weapons have a base damage of that elemental type, meaning electric or fire. You'll see the two weapons I'm using right now, the uh, Doom God's Fist. Um, they give negative to all armor per hit, which is amazing. Um, 3% chance to fully heal myself on kill. I have two of them, so that's 6% chance. That's just a little bonus. Um, the charge rate increase is what's really nice on these, and the fact that they do 100% pure fire damage. Um, I have them socketed with electric damage right now. Those are just two gems I had laying around. You'll notice I just hit 55, and the requirements for the weapon are 55. And since we don't build strength... I usually have to wait until the level requirement to use a weapon, unless I get lucky. Um, that being said, the reason my weapon damage is so high is because of fire and spark, for one, and the fact that I've invested fully in focus, and these do purely ele elemental damage. Um, so that's a nice bonus, helps you alleviate the pain a little bit. If you find a weapon that has high fire or electric, even if it has a little bit of physical, your fire and spark will help take it up to a level where it's actually a reasonable damage output and charge builder. Um, there are some dead zones in leveling where it's going to be hard to build your charge, and then that's when you rely on other skills, and I do have these in the build. There's charge domination, which we get at one point, um, pretty self-explanatory. It has a 3% chance to fill your charge bar when you kill an enemy, and that's when you kill an enemy. It does diminish in effectiveness in a multiplayer environment. Um, Going to the next page, we got Force Field. I've already mentioned this a few times, but Force Field is pretty much mandatory if you want to survive as a melee-based engineer just in the higher difficulties of the game. Even as a cannon engineer, you do usually take Force Field. Um, the amount of absorption it provides is ridiculous. At max rank, at 15 out of 15, at level 100, um, you can test this by making a console character if you like, um, but you get a believe it's 63,000 damage absorption when you have a full charge bar and you use this. Not to mention the fact that it is pretty inexpensive once you get the tier 3 bonus. I mean, the, you always notice the mana cost when you pop force field, but it does get alleviated later on. Um, especially with the tier 1 bonus, it really helps. And then the tier 3 is just amazing. Um, 
But your allies get a full strength shield. And in multiplayer, this is really, really helpful, especially on the elite difficulties. I don't really need to say too much else about force field. Um, with dynamo field, this is our charge builder in groups. Now, if you have supercharge up and you happen to have a really high elemental damage weapon, supercharge in large groups will, since it, it, it has an AoE effect to it, it will generate charge really, really quickly. That being said, Dynamo Field is a great skill because not only does it scale with your focus, but it also has a high interrupt chance, which is good for the hard-hitting enemies. Um, a lot of them are inter immune to interrupt, but for those that aren't, it alleviates some of the damage you could possibly be taking. And it hits everyone in an AoE with a damage over time effect. And this generates a set amount of charge for each person you hit. Now... This is really useful, especially early game. Like at level 21, when you first get this skill, you'll have a much better time generating charge, because the early game is really the harder part of this build. Um, so Dynamo Field, pretty important. I think I'm going to take it to 15 out of 15 with this character this time around. I did it the last time, and it works out um, for good charge building, especially when supercharge isn't up. Um, but taking it to 5 out of 10, or 5 out of 15, or 10 out of 15... Um, those are both viable options as well, I'd say. You do generate charge quickly, even at level 5. Um, another thing is a mobilization copter. I only take this to level 10 to get the elect extra electric damage. Um, it has a bug right now where it's interfering with dynamo field a little bit, so I might just take it to 5 until they fix that bug and leave my skill points left over someplace else, and hopefully they fix it soon. Um, but yeah, that's the skills of the build in a nutshell. You've got your storm burst as well for the mobility. I'm pretty sure I went over that. Um, it's just a 1 out of 15 in this time around. You could max this, and if you max this, I recommend leaving this at 1 point, um, like I said earlier. Um, but that's it for the skills. If you're interested in seeing me go through and do a map works run, there's another video that I'll be posting up right after this. But thank you guys for listening, and this is Shomkrank. See you later.